to be in the house of the Lord again. Amen. Amen. I sure have enjoyed being able to come on Wednesday nights. How about y'all? It really is such a refreshing. I know a lot of you have to go through a great deal of effort to be able to be here in the middle of the week. And I know that the Lord is honoring that. And I've just felt such a sweet spirit in this place tonight. I felt like Brother Pete, you already brought the word. I mean, if nothing else is said tonight, we've already been fed the good word. I appreciate you, brother. I really do. And I also appreciate you, Brother Wesley, for the word that you brought Sunday night. I mean, that was a real refreshing to me. And just like Brother Luke just mentioned when the Lord said, feed my sheep. And he spoke that word to my heart some years ago, and it's always been very precious to me. And, um... I, too, have um, gone through bouts of discouragement and um, feelings of inadequacy and struggling because it's a heavy calling, and um, it's actually something that the Lord has put on all of our hearts to go out and to share the gospel, and so it is a burden that we should all carry and take seriously, and And so I just appreciate you coming and bringing that word and bringing that encouragement and just not only reminding me, but reminding us all of just how important it is to walk in what he's given us and to know the authority that we have in him. And we are called, we are anointed, and we're chosen to be his vessels to be used for his glory. And we need to act like it. We need to walk in it. We need to go out and we need to share with boldness. And we need to encourage ourselves to encourage one another in the Lord that we're in this together. We are the body of Christ. And the Lord expects us to, as Brother Luke already said, to bear one another's burdens. That's something that's been on my heart too. That it's so wonderful to be able to come together. I was talking with Brother Mark just a little while ago about coming together and what a a special group of people that we are here, the unity that we have and the fellowship that we have and how much that is needed and it's necessary. And we just thank the Lord for giving us that and, and providing that for us. And so I hope that tonight will be an encouragement to you. I know it has been for me just walking back through all of this and relaying the foundation that the Lord Um, has laid out in his word um, through Paul. And um, I know that for some of you, you've heard this many times before, but you just cannot exhaust this. You cannot grow tired of hearing about what our Lord has done for us. And anything, as I've said before, that we would even try to build on top of that would... um, It would just be sinking sand. So we have to make sure that we go back from time to time and just relay the foundation. And so uh, last Wednesday, I believe we ended in Romans 6, verse 11. So I'd like to pick up on verse 12 tonight. We're going to see how far we get. Been told by pastor, we got to watch the clock because we got to have a party. (laughs) I'm excited. It's going to be a good night in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for the help that you give us. We thank you, Lord, that you come to us just as we are. Lord, and you have chosen to have a relationship with us. You have chosen to put us in right standing through the precious blood of your son, Jesus. Lord, please help us to understand fully all that you've afforded for us. Please help us, Father, in our walk with you, that we would grow closer to you, that, Lord Jesus, you would be the center of it all in our lives, Lord, and that we would come to know you in a greater way and understand the benefits of this great gospel, all that you died to give us, Lord. I just pray for these precious people. Lord God, I just pray that you would touch them And bless them in ways they never imagined, oh Lord. We're believing for mighty things from this group of people. We're believing, oh God, that your presence is with us. That you are leading and guiding and directing us, Lord. Speak to us. Help us, Lord. Strengthen us. Enable us to do what you've called us to do, oh God. And we give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Hallelujah. Bless his name. Glory to God. He's good. He is so good. Our God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. This is speaking of the sin nature. And Paul is telling us that even though we've come to Christ, that sin can still actually reign in our lives, that that sin nature can still take over and control us as much as we hate to admit that and we don't want to believe it. But I said before that the Lord hasn't made us robot people where he's just going to come in and control our lives and and that we would no longer be tempted by sin. You cannot lead a sinlessly perfect life. Um, But we can, through the help of the Holy Spirit, learn to keep our faith in Jesus Christ, which then makes the sin nature dormant to us, where it's no longer reigning in our body. This is what Paul is speaking of, and he knows what he's talking about, and if we are able to, and we get into Romans 7, we're going to learn about Paul's struggle with this sin nature and, and the law versus grace and how he is able to show us through the word of God, through the revelation of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross, that sin does not have to reign in our bodies, that we don't have to. Um, I've heard it explained before. I believe it's Brother Lauren Larson who says that when you are living in sin and the sin nature is active in your life, even though you are saved, if you don't fully understand that it's through resting in Christ that we have victory over sin, and you're trying to overcome it by your own means and ability, by your own willpower, you're incapable of doing this because inside of you is like a little sin factory that is just continuously pumping out more and more acts of sin. And there's really nothing that you and your flesh can do about it. You have to yield yourself to the working power of what Jesus Christ has already done when he defeated sin on the cross. And then that sin factory in you becomes unplugged. You're no longer continuously going about living a life of sin and struggling? Do you go home at the end of the day and you you lay down and you think about how much you failed and you're just miserable and and you want to be set free from those things that are binding you and you keep trying by your own power day after day to overcome but you just can't seem to do it and inside your heart you want to be free and you you love the Lord and you want to serve him but you just don't know how you don't understand why you can't have victory well I've got good news for you tonight You've already been given the victory through the blood of Jesus Christ. And all you have to do is understand that if we can just rest in that, if we can yield ourselves to that, then we can walk in this daily. And Paul will go on to explain that as we continue. So let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, But yield yourselves unto God. You see, you're either doing one or the other. You can yield yourself to unrighteousness and sin, or you can yield yourself to God. It's a choice that we have to make. It's a choice that he freely allows us to make because he doesn't want to control us. He wants you to have your own free will. He wants you to serve him because you love him, because you choose him Yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead. Glory to God. We've got to understand that when Christ died on that cross, we died with him. When he was buried, we were buried with him. And when he rose again, we rose with him. Glory to God. And now we can live in newness of life. It's like we've come alive from the dead. Glory to God. Abundant life in Jesus Christ. It's what he's designed for us to live by. We've been justified. We've been washed and we've been cleansed. And we've been sanctified so that we can live a holy life. Because of that power that works in us. As we yield ourselves to it. So as those who are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. 
Yield your body. Be that living sacrifice where you yield yourself as an instrument of righteousness unto God for his good pleasure. When you surrender to him that you can do the work that he's called you to do that will benefit his kingdom, there is fullness of joy in that. There is life abundant like nothing else that this world can provide to you. When you are living in the will of God and you are functioning according to the calling that he's placed upon you, there is an empowerment There is a peace, sanctifying peace. There's a joy like no other. Even though trials will come in this life and struggles and tribulations, he is right there with you, walking with you to help you through everything that you will ever face. And he loves you so much that not only did he send his son to come and die for you, but to give you an abundant life, not just an eternal life in heaven, but life abundantly here on this earth in victory what an awesome god hallelujah and all we have to do is yield ourselves to him all we have to do is just make ourselves available to him so that he can use us in the way that he sees fit and this is something that we have to do daily even though we've already been crucified with christ When the word of God speaks of taking up your cross daily, it's just having that constant reminder that we are in him because we so easily want to just place our faith back into ourselves and our good works and our ability because that's what feels good, because that's what works in the world. The harder you work, the higher up the ladder that you'll climb, the more money you'll make, the more successful you'll be. If you really put in that hard work and time and you study, you're going to do better on the test. You know, we've been taught that our whole lives. And yes, that works in the world system. But when it comes to spiritual matters, you cannot earn one bit of this. You cannot earn one ounce of his grace it's all freely given it's a free gift of God and that's the hardest thing for us to understand that we just have to let go and let God have his way in our lives and not only is it a day-to-day thing it's a moment-by-moment thing I mean, you may start off the day you get up and you have great intentions and, and you're ready to go and, and face the world and rebuke the devil and you're going to walk in victory and everything's going your way. But you know what I'm talking about. The first time that you run into a problem or a situation, you just find yourself getting angry and you're getting impatient and you get upset. You've had a long, hard day by the time it's over with and you come home and you end up getting in fights with your family members. You're just exhausted. You're just over it because you can't do it on your own. As hard as you may try, you have to understand that you've got to rest in Christ. And we will have some bad days. We've got to admit that. But his grace is ready to be poured out immeasurably. And as we have freely received this grace, we should freely give it to others as well. So it's a moment-by-moment thing, just constantly keeping our hearts in check and recognizing, oh, you know, I got in my flesh, but I'm going to repent and I'm going to bring it back to the Lord and daily ask the Lord to search your heart, to know you and try you, and you all just to know him more. Just to seek his face and have a closer walk with him every day, that's the goal. That's the goal, just to know him a little bit more than you did yesterday. It's not so much about all the great things that you're going to do for the Lord and the calling that's been placed on your life or how much anointing that you have because those things are great and they will be given to you. But you seek first the kingdom of God. You seek first that relationship, that personal daily walk with the Lord, and you will find he's going to add all those things. And I know I've been guilty of this. I have focused so much and put so much effort into my calling and wanting to please the Lord and do the best that I can. And I found that I can even turn that into a work of the flesh. Oh, he's not going to help me when I get up there because I could have stayed up a little later and studied. I could have prayed an extra hour. I could have, you know... Whatever I I just said to my spouse before we walk through the door, now he's not going to meet me there, you know, and and we struggle with this in our life. I love you, honey. I'm sorry. (laughs) But I find that he meets me there. 
he meets me in my point of need and, and I'm able to just let go of all of that and find grace in my time of need and find that quickening power and anointing of the Holy Spirit and boldness when I need it and, and the right words just come at the moment that I need them. Not that we shouldn't apply ourselves and take it seriously, but just know it's not about you. It's not about your performance. It's not about how hard you've labored for the Lord. Because he can't accept that. He can never accept the works of man. No matter how noble and good and and true or pure they may be. You've got to rest in him. You've got to trust in him and know that he's got it. It's his calling. It's the fruit that he grows in you. It really has nothing to do with you except being a willing vessel. Just to yield and surrender. Just letting him turn you into that lump of clay. And mold you and make you into what he wants you to be. Just the submission daily to the Lord. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Sin has no right, no authority, no legal action That Satan can take after you any longer because Christ came and he fulfilled the law. Glory to God. And now there is grace and grace abundantly. Hallelujah. The goodness of God extended to us who are undeserving. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. This is the same thing that we've already been through when we opened up chapter 6. Do we continue in sin that grace may abound? Of course not. That's a ridiculous interpretation of this scripture, right? Just because Christ came and he fulfilled the law, it doesn't mean that we should live by our own means or we can go out and we can sin as much as we want because we know grace is waiting there to wash our sins away. No, that's not the intention of this. The Lord still expects us to live righteous and pure and holy. He wants to sanctify us. He wants to cleanse us. He wants us to be examples of him and a good witness of him when we go about. There is still a moral law of God that's right and wrong, and he expects you to live according to it. But now we have so much more grace to live in the way that he wants us to. And with the precious Holy Spirit living inside of us to guide us and direct us and to convict our hearts when we've done wrong, the Lord surely expects us to pay attention to that and to yield to it and see the progress in our life as we grow in the Lord. Verse 16, Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants... You are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You're going to be serving one or the other. And it's like Brother Wesley was saying Sunday night. You've got that spirit man inside of you and you need to feed him. He needs the word of God. You need to grow in the Lord. And every decision you make, everything you do, you're either yielding yourself to the world and to sin and to death, to your flesh, or you're yielding yourself unto God. We need to learn to be obedient to the Lord and let his righteousness rule and reign in our hearts and give us victory. Verse 17, but God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. Say were were in the past we were once the servants of sin. We had no choice because we were born into it. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. This form of doctrine being the great message that we've been teaching on. The message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And how will they know unless they've heard? Unless someone goes and preaches it to them. Blessed are the feet of those who carry this good news. We've got to go and tell them. Aren't you glad someone came to you and brought that word to you? And you obeyed from your heart that form of doctrine. When you hear the word of God, it causes faith to arise in your heart. Faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. And although in your sinful state you may not have known 
the word of God. You believed it in your heart because something inside of you said, this is right. I believe this. This is the truth that I have been searching for. People are out there and they are looking for the truth and they are bound by sin because they are looking to all the things of the world to satisfy when only a relationship with Jesus Christ will satisfy that longing soul. And when they hear that word in their heart, and it's like when I first heard about this message, in my heart I felt like this is the answer. We had grown up, I had grown up in denominationalism. We had gone from a couple of different denominations and then we joined a word of faith church and then we were just searching for the truth. And then when I heard that all you really needed was the precious blood of Jesus Christ, when I heard it's not about an organization or a group of people or a title or a name, it's not about a position or a platform, it's about your relationship with Christ. I just felt like I'd been set free. And as I began to walk in this, though, I found that I was struggling. I didn't even realize it until something happened in my life that I didn't even fully understand this. You know, I thought I've got this message, and now I've got this special hedge of protection. Now we're a part of this elite group of people that that know the message better than everybody else. And we've got the key to victory. We've got the formula. And so we're on a higher platform than everybody else because we have the truth. And nothing bad's going to happen to us. We're going to walk in victory all our days. And then suddenly and tragically, we lost a loved one that was very close to us. And in my heart... I believed God was going to heal that person. I just knew it. I just knew there was no way that this could happen. It couldn't. No, we've got the right message. Nothing bad can happen to us, right? And we got the call in the middle of the night. And I was so just completely floored by this. I was struggling. I couldn't understand. I was angry at God. I was upset. I can remember Jeff trying to console me, trying to hold me, and I was just beating him in the chest, and I was hollering. I was like, Lord, why? Why? This wasn't supposed to happen. And I I was depressed for several days, and I was crying out to the Lord because I I began to, to just lose faith in everything that I believed. I thought I finally found the answer, and I felt like the Lord had failed me. And now what? Is all of this wrong? But the truth was, it was my understanding of it. It's not that bad times aren't going to come and and that the Lord's not going to call his saints home. We never know when your last day on earth is going to be. You don't know what you're going to face. The grief and the struggles and the trials of life, they will still find you. You have to have that even if he doesn't kind of faith you got to have the kind of faith that says, though he slay me, I will trust in him. If he sees fit to take someone I love from me, I'm still going to trust him. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We may lose everything we own tomorrow, but we're going to take a stand for Christ and we're still going to say that he's good and we're going to love him and we're going to carry on with everything that we have and we're going to keep sharing this great gospel because our God is good. No matter what comes or goes in this life, no matter the trials that you face, he is still good and he is still for you. And he will work those things for your good. We go through trials and pain and suffering and sickness. And the Lord allows us to show us that we can lean and depend on him. How would you know that he could? How can we go out and preach this and share this with others unless we'd been through it ourselves? He'll put you through the fire so that he can bring you forth his gold. So he can use you as a vessel for his honor and glory to go out and tell and to share. I know my God can because he's been there for me in the deepest, darkest of nights. He's been with me through pain and suffering and trial and in want and in lack. He's been my provision. He's healed my sick body. He's been with me in my moments of grief and despair. And he's restored me and strengthened me. And he's done it before. I know he'll do it again. And I know he'll do it for you. 
His presence has never left me. He has always been there. Even if I was confused, if I misunderstood what he was trying to show me, if I wasn't just living exactly right, he was there. Full of grace and mercy and compassion and long-suffering. We serve an awesome God. We serve a wonderful God who is for us and not against us. And I want you to be encouraged tonight. Whatever you're going through, he's with you. He is with you. Now is not the time to turn back. Now is not the time to start second guessing if you're in the right place or doing the right thing. God is for you. And he has brought you here for such a time as this. And there are great things that are about to happen. He has placed you in a position to provide provision for you in your time of need. Whatever it is that you're lacking, I feel like blessings are on the way. If you can just hold on, if you'll just stay the course, you keep clinging to that nail-scarred hand, he will never fail you. You can stake your life on it. Our God will never fail. Hallelujah. I don't care. The gates of hell will not prevail against this church. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be encouraged tonight. Verse 18, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Even though we're his servants, I'm going to tell you, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Glory to God. He said, you come to me if you are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. There is joy on this journey. Fulfilling the call of God on your life, it's not about a bunch of rules and rituals and And hoops that you have to jump through and people that you have to please. And you got to try to work your way up the ladder to get to the platform, to hold the microphone, to, to prove yourself. It's not about you. God has already made a way. And if you'll just rest in him and let go, he will exalt you in due time. He will. And he'll prepare your heart and he'll give you peace and satisfaction just walking with him. That the goal isn't about being known or being recognized. It's about knowing him more. And when that becomes real to you, when knowing him becomes so real, that's all that matters. All those other things, like the song says, they will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Hallelujah. Verse 19, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. The manner of men, that's referring to Adam's fall in the garden. And and after him, we're all born after that same manner because of the infirmity of our flesh. We are weak in our flesh and we are unable to do without his help what he's called us to do. But thank the Lord he gives us the strength and ability through his precious blood. For as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, Even so now, yield your members, servants, to righteousness unto holiness. If you think back on those times when you were living for the world and you were yielding yourself as a member to uncleanliness, it was iniquity after iniquity piling up. It was full of shame and and not understanding why you aren't fulfilled in your heart because you didn't have a relationship with your Creator. And it's what people need. Even so now, yield your members servants to righteousness and unto holiness. For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. When you were serving sin, it was impossible for you to be righteous. You weren't even really conscious of righteousness. You weren't even thinking about um, right or wrong. You're just living for yourself and for your own pleasure and to fulfill the lust of your flesh. But what fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? Anything that you did in your past life is fruitless. It amounts to nothing. You think back sometimes and you may have regret or guilt and shame over those wasted years. What fruit is there? There's nothing that you can even boast or glory in. It's just all shame. But thank the Lord for his precious blood that erases all of our sins that makes us justified in the eyes of God, just as if we never sin. We are not guilty. There's not even a record of our sin. I know I've said this many times, but you've got to understand what a great miracle that is of God. He washes your sins away. He casts them as far as the east is from the west. You are in right standing with God. 
taking on the righteousness of Christ. So now you can live a holy life through the power and operation of the Holy Spirit. There is no shame. There is no guilt. You don't have to look back with regret because he can bless your latter end. He can do so much more when you yield yourself to him than all those years of sin. He can turn it all around for good. Glory to God and give you an amazing testimony that you can share with people. Hallelujah. The end of those things is death. All those fruits of unrighteousness, it all just leads to death. When you are living for this world, when you are living for yourself, Satan comes to steal and kill and destroy. And the word of God says he's like a roaring lion that's roaming about seeking whom he may devour. He just wants to take from you. He wants you to be sick. He wants you to to feel like you're lost and alone and depressed and full of anxiety and confused and not able to serve the Lord. He wants to keep you bound by sin. But verse 22 says, but now being made free from sin, that we've become servants to God and you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Glory to God. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trial seems so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race, saint of God, until we see Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To the end is everlasting life. Hallelujah. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, some glad morning, when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to that land on God's celestial shore. Oh, I'll fly away. I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by. Oh, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to the land where joy shall never end. Oh, I'll, I'll fly away. Are you ready for that day? Glory to God. When we're going to see Jesus face to face. Oh, when our faith becomes sight. What a day that will be. When my Jesus I shall see, and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand, he leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, no sorrow there. No burdens to bear. No sickness or pain. No more parting over there. Forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord praise in this house tonight. I could sing his praises forever and ever. Our God is so good. Our God is so good. And I can't wait for that day when I see my Jesus face to face and I'm standing in my eternal home. Glory to God. Walking those streets of gold. Oh, it's going to be worth it all. It's going to be worth it all. Glory to God. But while we're here on this earth, he's made provision for us. He sent his precious Holy Spirit. He didn't leave us without help. Glory to God to lead us and guide us and direct us and give us knowledge, to give us help and comfort in our time of need. And I just want to encourage you tonight. You are called and you are chosen and he has given you everything that you need for victory in this life. And all we need to do is rest in it and to walk in it. Hallelujah. He has sanctified you. We've talked a lot about justification. 
But I want to tell you a little bit about sanctification. We've got just a couple of minutes left, and I'm not going to be able to get into everything that I wanted to, but that's okay, because hopefully we'll get to come back next week and finish. I don't know how long we're going to go with this, but I've, I've really been blessed going through this with y'all. I hope you have been too. But the sanctification process or the act of making and declaring someone holy is something that only the Lord Jesus Christ can do through his precious blood. You cannot sanctify yourself. You cannot make yourself holy. It's being morally right and acceptable by God, washed and cleansed and set apart and consecrated for a holy purpose, making you fit to serve. Another word for it is venerate, which is a word for reverence. A reverential respect to admire and to honor. That's how the Lord feels about his church. That's how he wants his church to be seen by others. He wants us to be respected and something that the world can look at and honor and admire. When you think about the beautiful bride of Christ, washed and holy and pure, A bride adorned for her husband, ready, watching, and ready for his soon return, longing to be together once again. That's how Christ feels about us, and that's how we should feel about him. And it's through his precious blood that we can be that glorious bride without spot or wrinkle. And at the moment of salvation, you are justified and you are sanctified all by his grace because you have to be cleansed before you can be saved in the first place. So it's, a, it's an act that actually kind of happens at the same time, but then we progress in our sanctification. People call it um, progressive sanctification, but it is really us who are progressing in it because In the eyes of God, you've already been put in right standing. When you've been justified and sanctified, and He, when He sees you, He sees Christ in you, and the price that was paid that makes you worthy to be called His son or His daughter, that makes you worthy to be used of Him. And so, the way it's been explained to me is that what the Lord is attempting to do in in our daily walk with Him is to take our position up to our condition to where we truly are in Christ so it's our daily walk which shows us day by day who we truly are in Christ and where we stand with him because if your faith is in Christ then your standing with the Lord is not going to change unless you lose your salvation unless you just choose to turn your back on God but as long as you love the Lord and your faith is in Jesus Christ that position isn't going to change based on the things that you do on the day to day or if you commit a sin you can come and you can repent and you can be in right standing with God and those things aren't going to separate you from a relationship with the Lord because if that was the case none of us could have a relationship with the Lord he doesn't want to make it that hard for you this is a free gift and he wants to pour it out he wants to give you that grace so that you can walk with him and this is something that he's going to reveal to you day by day as you walk with him and you learn to trust him through the trials of life and you draw closer and closer to him and it's not by our works it's by faith alone And I want to leave you with this scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, completely. And I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved. It be guarded. It be kept blameless, faultless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has promised, our God of peace has promised to sanctify you wholly and completely, your whole spirit, soul, and body. As Brother Wesley did such a great job in clarifying that, I thought, Sunday night. You did really good with that, brother. Um, That he will come and sanctify you, spirit, soul, and body, that you will be preserved, guarded, and kept blameless, faultless, 
until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is more than enough, more than enough blood that was shed for you, more than enough grace that flows from Emmanuel's veins. Hallelujah. Oh, sinners plunged beneath that flood will lose all their guilty stains. Hallelujah. Just come back to the source of life when you feel dry and you feel empty because there is more than enough. There is an overabundant supply until the day of Christ's return. Hallelujah. He is provided for you. The table has been spread and prepared and he says come and dine come and partake of the water of life freely whosoever will glory to God so that includes me and you tonight amen hallelujah glory to God were you blessed tonight hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Lord hallelujah let's go to the Lord in prayer Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had together, Lord. I just thank you for the opportunity to come before your people, Lord, and to share all that you've put on my heart, Lord. And I just pray that you would continue to bless the people, bless this church, Lord. Strengthen us in the unity of the faith. We thank you for your precious blood. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for us, Lord. We just want to give you all the praise and glory and honor. Lord, I pray that you would bless our time of fellowship, Lord, and you would bless us as we travel home and that you would bring Bring us back together at the next appointed time. And it is in your name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.